This is uh, Eric here from uh, from Conquer. So yes, I'm going to take you through um, this uh, this presentation. There, there will be a few set of slides, and then um, I'm going to dive into a bit of a demo of, of the solution so that you get a better idea, and then hopefully leave enough time for the Q and A session. Uh, so here is here is a bit of the agenda. Here, um, we can intro that we that happened already, and then we're going to dive into the AP process and demo. Okay. So first, before going into straight into the AP process, uh, let's take a look at what happens actually upfront when a user decides to buy something on behalf of the company. Um, there are many ways companies spend to buy goods or services. Um, you know, they pay the oh, they pay telco, uh, utility bills, as well as spend on travel and expenses. But in the end, this comes down to two ways that are presented on this slide. It is either a pre-approved spend or not. So pre-approved usually uh, implies that you have a purchase requisition process with an approval workflow before you eventually send a purchase order to the supplier. Um, of course, depending on your company, this process can be more or less complex, and depending on your type of industry, inventory, goods, and so on. Um, but as mentioned, there is also a user-driven process where your employee makes the decision to request directly from the supplier without prior approval. Now, there is, um, I'm switching to the next slide, um, there is an interesting survey actually from Forrester Consulting conducted among uh, 1,500 users from different companies showing that even in companies that have a defined policy with a defined pre-approval process, there are still 30% of users that are not concerned about this production policy. They will continue to buy online uh, or contact suppliers directly anyway. Um, and, and this survey was highlighted that some of the reasons given by the users were that, well, it was faster, more convenient. Um, they, they kind of were free to, to, to have more choices and, and could research better options and, and think also that they could get better prices. So this, these are interesting findings, but these have two different direct consequences for, for your company. Uh, the first one is that as a financial controller or CFO, you have actually no clue about this term. Uh, that is not pre-approved. Uh, you only discover it when your AP team enters the invoice into your ERP system, financial system. Um, the second one is actually this will directly impact the way you, you deal with invoices. Um, obviously, invoices that are not related to a purchase order, meaning that they have not been pre-approved, will have to go in an approval workflow. This is where we can, we see, you know, and you, we'll, we'll show that today, there's, there can be long, long cycle to, uh, to approve this. Um, and, but this is necessary. This, the user has to confirm this is a valid invoice, um, that the goods and all service have been delivered, and that it is okay to pay uh, the, the supply. So what, what I want to do is, um, we, we've been talking for four years to many companies in, in Australia and New Zealand there, and um, I wanted to kind of highlight our findings there so through this little animation there, showing what, what a typical manual AP process is. This might be more or less close to your, uh, to your actual process, but that can give you a bit of an understanding how painful it can be and what better ways there could be. So, um, well, when the supplier has delivered the goods or services, obviously there will be an invoice sent because he wants to be paid. So um, today, in, in, our, in our words, uh, still, there, there will be a lot of papers coming. So most likely you will receive a lot of those invoices by, by post, hopefully coming into a centralized um, accounts payable department there. We'll open the envelope and uh, uh, pile all these tax invoices on the desk and go and start process those um, invoices. Now, the thing is that some suppliers have gone already uh, a step further trying to eliminate this paper, but because you have a manual process, you're likely to actually print this invoice internally so that it can flow with the rest of your invoices. At that stage, this is where accounts payable work will start. So there will be Verification of this invoice, does it match with a purchase order, which we call a two-way match? Does it match with a purchase order and a goods receipt to ensure, you know, there's been a proper delivery and that's called a three-way match? Is there exception there? In this case, that will have to go through 
an exception handling workflow. Um, and obviously, if it's non-related to a purchase order, then they will, they, this will have to go through what we, obviously we discussed as this approval workflow. So here we've seen many different ways, but uh, in, in some companies it happens actually that those invoices are still put into some envelopes into the internal courier before they are sent to, to, to an employee maybe in a, in, a, in a different business unit, or they might be walked down the, to the next floor uh, on, on, to, to, to find the employee and request for this approval. And usually this is at that stage that the supplier will go and inquire about the invoice. Have you received my invoice? Um, when am I going to get paid? And here, depending on what accounts payable has done, uh, maybe they've written down the invoice somewhere or they made actually a copy of it, uh, which is more paper. Uh, or maybe they have no clue because they don't know. They, this with the employee, they have no visibility and they might just uh, waste a bit of time there to before they can uh, find out where this invoice is there. So um, that's, that's typically inquiries uh, to accounts payable, number of calls is, is typically one of the pain that we see. Now the employee has been traveling, coming back to his desk a uh, few, few, few days after and look at this pile of invoice. And here um, use uh, the famous stamp uh, that we see a lot on invoices and we'll scribble down his cost center and signature as an approval. And um, in some organization, actually, there might be different levels of approval. So that might, again, flow to some other desks, to other approvers, before um, obviously taking time before it eventually comes back to accounts payable. Now, this is obviously if accounts payable has received the invoice directly, but it could have been received also directly in the business unit. And here, obviously, you have even less visibility on this invoice that might sit again on the desk of the employee for many days before uh, it is stamped, um, approved, and then comes back to accounts payable. At that stage, there can be uh, more calls to uh, the user to confirm or maybe to, to uh, for some, uh, again, some issue resolutions. And at that time, this is the first time accounts payable have an approved invoice that they will be able to process. Now, studies, um, so, so the numbers I will, I will show there are coming from a, a study from Aberdeen, but they've, they've analyzed and it, in average it takes about 17 days to approve an invoice. So just keep that, keep that in mind um, and, and maybe compare with, with what happens in, in your company to that. So at that stage, there will be a manual entry of this invoice into the ERP. And actually, this, as I mentioned before, this is the first time potentially you have the visibility and you are able to make reports on those invoices 17 days after actually you are, um, you are um, legally liable for, for this invoice. Accounts payable hasn't finished usually. They will uh, take the invoice, uh, write down the document number given by the ERP system, and actually archive uh, these documents uh, up to the next financial audit and usually potentially up, up to a third party um, uh, provider for, for the longer period of, of archiving. And at that stage, this is when you're gonna pay your supplier. So if we look at the timeline here, um, down below the slide, um, that would have taken probably four or five days before this invoice uh, flows through, through the post. And then at that stage, this is where um, you are able to get the due date and start working on this invoice. So going through AP, the workflow issue resolution, um, and then eventually post in the ERP. Uh, potentially take the risk with this long approval cycle to pay uh, post it after the due date and pay late, uh, having potentially a angry supplier. Um, this study that I was mentioning from Aberdeen also uh, highlights that the average cost per invoice is, is about $31. And, uh, and that actually because of this lengthy cycle of approval, you are likely to capture only 9% of the potential discount that you may um, get on, 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 on the amount of your invoice. So here this slide is just what to highlight, you know, some of the pain. So some, some of you might relate to, to those, but typically we hear, you know, that the main drivers to look at, you know, improving this, this type of process is around, you know, the manual data entry, all the workflow and exception handling. Uh, obviously, 
capturing duplicate invoices, making sure you don't lose invoices, uh, the lack of visibility and control on, on, those, on all these uh, steps. Um, the supplier inquiries is usually uh, also a big impact on the AP department. The paper, long cycle times, late payment fees, missing discounts, as I mentioned. Potentially also, if you pay late, const constantly having your uh, account blocked uh, on, on hold, which might actually impact even further your business. So now let's, uh, let's look at what could be a, a better ways, typically. Um, so here, again, I've got a little animation about, about this, um, this flow here. So we're still starting with the supplier and, and, and the invoice there. And as I mentioned, those suppliers nowadays have the ability from their system to issue uh, actually an email with, a, with a, uh, an invoice as a PDF. So why not benefit from this? The supplier will be even more happy uh, than sending an email which costs, uh, basically which is free compared to, uh, to the sending by post which, which has an impact on, on, on him. Um, and and we in, usually in those applications with receiving the, at that point where you receive the email, you actually have the visibility. You know that you've received this, in, this invoice there. Obviously, not all suppliers will send and they, uh, as an email, this will also go through paper and here obviously this is where uh, you probably heard those solutions coming with a scanning uh, and, uh, and uh, so you would have to scan the invoice to turn it into a digital image um, because at that point so because you have visibility you also, your supplier also have visibility if you have a solution with the supplier portal you're able actually to redirect your suppliers eliminating all the uh, calls inquiry to your department the supplier can go for the basic questions such as have you received my invoice when are you going to when am i going to get paid the supplier can actually use this self service to identify this and answer these questions um, so once you receive the the, the, the email there um, and and the invoice has uh, has been turned into an electronic document this is where th these solutions actually apply what is called ocr which stands for optical character recognition so here basically this uh, tool will run through the invoice and actually will read this invoice, will extract the text out of the invoice in order to prepare a web form um, that is accessible to, through, to accounts payable. They will have the visibility, they can view the invoice and they have the visibility on the text that has been extracted. And from that point they can work on this invoice. It's in the system, um, it, it has been automatically matched because it has found a purchase order, it has automatically been matched with the, your purchase order into your system. Um, if everything is good, it matches the purchase order, it matches the good receipt, it can actually flow directly into your ERP. Or it might, it might go through some exception handling and at that point that might go into a workflow for approval as well. So here, uh, benefit of those, um, uh, of those solutions is that um, you can um, use your mobile phone. In nowadays, uh, everyone has a mobile phone and uh, the invoice will actually be redirected uh, to the employee um, that will receive an email notification uh, into his app or, or, or directly a notification in his application. We'll be able actually to review this, this invoice and approve it and work on it as is traveling, for example. And there will be also reminders uh, so that you don't lose time there into the approval flow. Automatic escalation if he's away. And because it's an automated workflow, you know actually it can flow from an employee to an employee. It's all preset into the system. At some point, accounts payable will be able to verify all, all this invoice. And at that point, the data will be automatically submitted into the ERP system. Uh, no more manual data entry. We have already extracted the data, so it can be pushed automatically and integrated into the ERP system. And obviously, the invoice will be archived and kept electronically as long as it is required for your audits and the, the legal required period. And obviously, at that point, you, can, you will be in a position to pay your supplier. So if we come back at this timeline that we had previously here, we're looking at now receiving an invoice potentially directly through an email or in a quicker way, um, and then go through uh, a quicker process there with reminders, with a workflow that is automated, where AP has got visibility all along this flow, 
and post in the ERP earlier, which means that potentially you can pay, you can decide to pay your supplier and who obviously might be happy to uh, be paid earlier uh, in exchange potentially of this early payment discount that, you, that you're losing today. So if we look at those numbers that I mentioned in the previous slide where I said that in average it costs $31 to process a manual invoice, 17 days to, to actually go through this approval flow and uh, where you potentially capture only 9% of early payment discount. Now with such an automated solution we can bring down those numbers to about $5, uh, 5 days and uh, the ability to capture now 66% of early payment discount. Now, I will, I will present Conquer, obviously, I will introduce Conquer. Um, there are better ways and Conquer is actually one of those ways. Um, the Conquer invoice, uh, invoice management solution uh, actually starts up front, um, even before receiving the invoice. I mentioned earlier how uh, some users go and spend uh, on their own um, and actually there is a, a, an easy way in, uh, in Conquer to provide the ability to pre-authorize your purchase. Uh, users can raise a purchase requisition that can follow a workflow for approval to finally send the purchase order automatically to the supplier. Uh, now just want to set expectations there. Um, Conquer solution does not aim at replacing a complex procurement solution that is already in place for example in your RP system which is related to goods and inventory and your supply chain. Uh, the Conquer purchase request process is actually aimed to be very simple to handle all these purchases that are actually today going uh, with non, non, which are non-pre-approved. So but this is a very easy way to actually control your spend uh, upfront. Um, when it comes to the next step, um, uh, receiving the invoice, I highlighted that it is then very easy to receive invoices sent by email, but I also uh, explain that you will still receive paper invoices. So at that point they will be scanned and go through this OCR engine to extract data and present it for verification. But now keep in mind, you can, you can handle this process on your side, but keep in mind that actually Conquer offers this as a service as well. Uh, suppliers can send invoices directly to Conquer. Uh, we have staff actually who can open the envelope, scan the invoices, verify the data, uh, extracted by the OCR engine, uh, validate the header and, and line information before this invoice and all the data comes back into your flow. Um, the next step is actually the flow, <laughs> workflow and approval. Um, Conquer can handle any type of workflow really for exception handling, payment approval. Um, some of you may already know how flexible the workflow for expense is. Uh, well actually we're using obviously the same workflow engine. Uh, except that it has been adapted to, for, for invoices. So you can route invoices based cost set on cost center, manager, project manager, financial limits, approval, and, and so on, and many more. Um, in the end, at the, at the end of this workflow, obviously, the invoice will be approved for payment. Um, so you have the flexibility here as well to, to continue uh, pay um, uh, out of your ERP system maybe today um, and, uh, but also keep in mind there that also Conquer offers a solution to manage and automate the payment here. And obviously there is reporting. Uh, from, the, from the time the invoice is scanned into Conquer, we actually capture this data. Uh, Conquer provides probably more reports than you need. Um, most commonly used one, you know, are those reports on accrual because now you can report before actually the invoice flows and is posted in your ERP so you can see how much liabilities you have um, uh, waiting um, without, you know, discovering them only after 17 days or 20 days you've received this invoice. Um, there are also, um, also popular reports are the ones giving you the visibility where are the invoices when the Supplier, if the supplier still calls, you can still have a view on, on those invoices in the flow. And um, so uh, Conquer is not just a bad invoice. I, I, I want to position there uh, quite strongly the, pla the platform and the, 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 the power of, of it. Like this is not just for invoice, this is for all employees then. You know probably better uh, Conquer for travel and expense, but actually with the invoice, this is a pretty powerful solution to control all your spend and have this visibility there. Um, so 
obviously reducing risk, increasing the compliance, um, the, the tax management, capturing attendees for the FBT reporting, for example, is one of those. Um, there are industry solutions we integrate with any ERP. Um, there is Concur mobile applications as well, and I will show that in, in the demo in a, in a, in a minute. And, and to better illustrate, actually, this, this the power of this platform, uh, this, is, this is what it can help you achieve there. Uh, this dashboard here demonstrates how data captured can help your company have full visibility on your spend and actually uh, take action. Um, so uh, if we look at this report on the left-hand side, you, oops, sorry, I clicked <laughs> on the slide. On the left-hand side, you can view actually the spends related to travel and expense. Um, it includes what, uh, what is actually uh, already spent and due, but um, there are actually also the travels that have not been yet approved and that are um, still waiting for someone. It's in the flow, uh, not accepted yet. In the middle, you can see the invoice spend, uh, where actually you have also the invoices that you've received, which is all the liability. But if you set up and put in place this uh, purchase requisition process with a pre-approval, you might have also some purchases requests there that have not yet been approved. So on the right-hand side, this is what you can control then, because if you know your budget, you can actually check and understand, you know, if you're going to be up above your budget this month or this quarter, you can actually take actions and go back to um, the travelers and say, well, maybe you're not going to travel this month, you know, internationally because that has a cost that will impact my budget. And then maybe you want to postpone this to the next month. And same for the purchase, maybe you want to postpone those purchases. So that's an idea about how actionable this data can be there. So at that point, um, I'm finished with the slide. I'm going to jump into um, the um, quick demonstration there. So here I'm logged. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. So here I'm logged into the um, the Conquer application as a user. So uh, some of you might recognize this, and as you can see, it, you can rec recognize the travel expense. Um, and and my, my, I've got a list of expenses there. And you can see there's now there's a menu for invoice. So invoice is totally integrated into the system. So obviously, a huge benefit of, of using a system that is already preset, uh, same users, same approvers. Um, and when I go into the invoices, I will start actually to show you um, what it looks like to verify an invoice. I mentioned an invoice coming. The data is extracted by this OCR engine. And here I'm going to see uh, a list of uh, invoices that came through that have been um, processed and are ready for this verification step. So you can see here some of them have been received by email. I've got actually the subject. I will take this one with this invoice from the repairman and I will open it for verification. So the, the, the screen is kind of split in two uh, at that stage. On, on the right hand side there is the actual invoice. Um, okay, with the information there. Actually, this one has two pages, I think, because on the second page, yes, there are some uh, material description. Um, and on the first page, you can see, actually, uh, there are some kind of text that has been highlighted there. And here, this is actually where the OCR engine has, has performed its task to extract the text. So you can see it has recognized some of the information there. On the left-hand side, you have a form uh, that can be customized with different fields. But you can see here, this is we, we're looking for a because we're on an invoice. We're looking for an invoice number or an invoice date. So if I highlight the invoice number on the left, I can see here that now in yellow, I, I have the invoice number that is highlighted on the right-hand side on my invoice. So this is where it has extracted the invoice number. Uh, our OCR engine can work on any type of form, even if it has never, even if it has never seen an invoice. It is the first time. Why? Because it is intelligent enough to look for uh, patterns into the uh, into the header information. Like we know, we are looking for an invoice number. So we're looking for invoice number, invoice NO, invoice dash, inf dash, and so on. Same for purchase order number an invoice date. So we're looking for those information to actually pre-fill this form with uh, eliminating or, or reducing all the manual data entry. Obviously there are the amounts and then there are the um, line items information. Here again as well we've extracted 
some of the line item information there. Okay, you can see the description has been extracted from here. So at that point here, and obviously we recognize the vendor uh, automatically, uh, and then at that point, after this verification step has been done, I can actually submit this for processing. Okay. So at that stage, yes, I want to create a payment request. And at that stage, I will go actually to the list of invoices that are ready for processing after this verification step. So here you can see a list of invoices. So this is typically where AP will work from this list. You know, they have there are different type of invoices there. Uh, we have automatically rec recognized some expense types, and you can see here um, some of them have more uh, information. Like this one is matched to a purchase order, or this one does not match a purchase order. Uh, this one is actually going further. It doesn't find the purchase order, neither the receipt there. Okay, so we have in this case um, uh, identified a purchase order and tried to verify if this is the good price, this is the good quantity, and reported potential errors so that accounts payable can uh, can look at those. Now, if I look at my uh, invoice that I pushed through, which is this last one, I will open it. Okay. Well, actually, this one is an interesting one <laughs> because this is a duplicate invoice number. I was not expecting that in the demo, but that is perfect to show you how we identify those duplicates. And here I can actually be mindful and, and as an accounts payable, uh, verify if I actually or, already received this invoice. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I will change the invoice number so that uh, I can process it. <laughs> And here I want to show you um, at that stage, you know, this is where uh, potentially you can uh, affect some cost object to this, uh, this non-purchase order invoice. This is non-purchase order there. Then, for example, this line item here, you can decide actually to distribute it across multiple cost centers. Uh, you can add them manually or you can use what we call favorites. So here I've got one that is preset, for example, for where I will split this cost between two cost center sales and procurement. Obviously, you can define uh, all different cost objects depending you know, if you have projects or um, all the types of, uh, of um, cost objects in your organization. Um, just I want to highlight on this one also, um, you have access to the approval flow. So here, this is preset. This type of uh, in invoice here will go actually as next step, will go for approval to my manager. And potentially here, I've got a limit approval defined. So depending on the amount, that might or might not go to this second approval. Okay. Another thing I just want to highlight is actually the audit trail. This is quite important, particularly at the time of you know, your financial audit, because here you, we capture anything that has happened on this invoice all along the way, and we, we record it for, uh, for, for future audit. So let me submit this um, uh, invoice, which will actually flow in this case, as we've seen, to my, to my manager for approval. And now what I would like to do is actually switch to uh, my mobile. Okay, so hopefully you can see it, yes. Okay, so, oops, I'm on my mobile there, and I will actually go into the Conquer mobile application. So here, as a, as a manager, I'm traveling. I'm in my taxi, uh, going back to the airport, it's the end of the day, you know, I've got a bit of time there, so I will log into Con my Conquer app and actually review what, what I have. So you can see here I've got one approval at the bottom, but actually it turned now to two because now I'm, 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 my mobile application, I've been informed that there's actually a second invoice that came through. So I will click on approval, go into my two invoices to review. So here again, as an approver, you can see here that the, the benefit of the platform invoice, I can approve also purchase requests, my trips, my expense reports, it's all on the same application there. I don't need to learn a new, new application here. Let me go into my invoice, hopefully, here we go. There's a bit of lag between the my mobile and the display, and I can see here I've got my second the second invoice which is repair man. So if I open it there as a as an approver, I will want, for example, to view this invoice. So I can open the image because this is important. So I've got a view on my invoice there. I can verify, you know, the amounts and so on. I can obviously. Um, 
click on the details of this invoice okay with the total amount and the header information and I can even see the distribution there so I can see that it's been distributed and I can actually review the different distribution there first center cost center sales the second cost center for procurement and at that stage I can decide at the bottom you can see those two buttons I can send back or I can approve so if I'm happy with it I can directly approve this invoice and it will continue its flow potentially go through my to, through the second manager depending on the on the on the amount of this invoice